This universal declaration of human rights may well become the international Magna Carta of all men everywhere. After the Second World War and the Great Economic Depression, there was a spirit to think what can we do to ensure that this kind of situations will never happen again. Because of her travels during the war in England, during the Blitz in the Pacific, while the Pacific is being bombed, her connection to, to the people of the world is so complete. After FDR dies, there are many efforts to get Eleanor Roosevelt to run for the Senate, and there's even some thought that maybe she should run for vice president. The one position she is excited about, that she accepts, is when Harry Truman offers her a membership in the delegation, the U.S. delegation, to the United Nations. It was such an opportunity to build a movement for peace and for human rights. She was very aware of being almost ostracized by the men, not part of their conversations. And the irony is when she is asked to go into the committee that writes the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, they think that's going to be a social committee of no interest, but it then becomes one of the most important committees. Eleanor Roosevelt, being a woman who was very strong with democratic ideas, and she was really a key on the draft of the Declaration of Human Rights. I now open the meeting of the drafting committee of the Commission on Human Rights. One other person that was such a big influence on Eleanor Roosevelt was India's Hansa Mehta. For the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it was Hansa Mehta who said, excuse me, Mrs. Roosevelt, if you say all men are created free and equal, around the world it will be all men, women not included. And so the words were changed to all human beings. That small change has had a tremendous impact women will be included everywhere. All human beings, men and women and children, have these rights. It says that these rights of the people are not because you are from some geographical region, because you have from some culture or some religion. It's just because we are human beings, just because we exist, that we are entitled to those rights. The real change which must give to people throughout the world their human rights must come about in the hearts of people. Their ability to work together, to negotiate across all their differences, is really what made the creation of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights possible. It is a declaration of basic principles of human rights and freedoms and to serve as a common standard of achievement for all peoples of all nations. And it's particularly fitting that here tonight the uh, person who's been the leader in this movement, assisted though she has been by many others, I refer of course to Mrs. Roosevelt, the delegate of the United States. It's one of the most significant moments in world history. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights is the beacon for the future. We will ensure that this Universal Declaration will be the light that shines and will guide how we relate to each other. If we observe these rights for ourselves and for others, I think we will find that it is easier in the world to build 
peace. 